cash 22. 반복 되는 삶. What to do? Cash 22. 눈치 채자 맞아. It's no use. Cash 22. 이 건물 인수 yeah. Cash 22. Still I gotta make a move. Hello my lovelies, today I'm going to show you guys how I cover up my acne and my acne scars on my face. Now, I'm currently having a bad reaction to my second round of tretinoin. Your girl has a lot to cover up right now. My skin's looking a little rough, I could admit that, but it's fine because I'm going to show you how I cover all of this up. I think a common mistake that many people make, including myself for a very long time, is do your whole face routine and then be like, oh, now I want to cover up my acne scars and my acne so then you grab your little concealer and you start dotting it on the parts of your face that have acne and texture and then you bring way more attention to your acne it adds not only another thick layer of makeup to your face, it also brightens up the areas that have acne you don't want that because if you did want that you wouldn't have clicked on this video and I oh and that's the real tea. You have to look at your face as a canvas. Now, when artists paint, they don't just throw paint onto a canvas and hope that a painting will come together. Most of the time, they first draw on the canvas slightly and then they underpaint and then they paint over the underpaint. It's a very meticulous process that creates the beautiful paintings that we see today. You need to look at your makeup the same exact way. Way. This is especially important when it comes to covering acne and acne scars. When you're doing your makeup routine, the first step will always be skincare. When you don't do your skincare properly, your skin tends to look very inflamed. That inflammation becomes very obvious when you're doing your makeup. Your acne becomes very red, it becomes very swollen, your face is even swollen. You cannot cover that up with the most expensive makeup in the world. You have to do some type of skincare routine. Personally, for me, I prioritize moisture over anything. My skin tends to dry up a lot when I wear makeup. I don't want my makeup getting dry and flaking off, girl. That's not cute, okay? So I already did my skincare, which is why my skin's looking a little... Yeah, my skin is definitely giving glow right now. I just washed my face with a gentle cleanser and I use some toner and a light moisturizer. Nothing too thick because I don't want to use a moisturizer that will take a long time for my skin to soak up because then my makeup will just slip off my face. I am going to start with my eyes and eyebrows first while my skin is soaking up all this moisture. Now, I start with my eyebrows first. The main reason why I start with my eyebrows first is because I tend to do my eyebrows very sloppy. And if you can see, my eyebrows are currently not done for the sake of transparency that's just how it is honestly it's embarrassing how little i do my eyebrows because i just don't like plucking them it takes too much time and i'm miserable with it and i'm gonna show you how to work with that since you know that's just the reality of my life it's gonna be a little hard so i use this little this nyx brow glue it's in the color medium brown and i do this sloppy when i mean sloppy i mean sloppy let me take off my glasses girl the reason why i like using this brow gel is because i could like fill as much of my eyebrows as i need and as you can see i definitely get sloppy with it this also glues down my eyebrows so it's like a really quick one two three step this is the difference do you see that i usually use a concealer this is kind of a big brush but I'm just gonna start bringing it to the other side so I could get an idea of how I wanna shape. This is also why I do my eyebrows first. I think my eyebrows are probably like the first thing that most people see when they see me. I don't know if it's because my eyebrows are thicker or because, girl, I don't know. I did my other eyebrow. They don't have to be perfect. I usually cover up this one. This is the one that the eyebrow lady a couple years ago messed up. My eyebrows will never look the same. It's okay, I'm not upset about it. I'm not. I promise. I'm gonna show you what I do with my eyes. Now, since I kind of do my eyebrows a little sloppy and I put concealer on my eyes, a lot of times I feel like it kind of makes my eyes look washed out and kind of like an unfinished makeup look and I don't want that. So what I do is kind of contour my eyes. It kind of brings life back to them. So for this, it's like really, really simple. You just have to get a light brown and it's really important that you get a light that you get a light brown eyeshadow because if you get a dark brown it's going to become too obvious and then it kind of looks like a sloppy unfinished cut crease and you don't want that or if you do 
do you boo. I ain't no makeup connoisseur. This is just what works for me. But I'm gonna use this Too Faced Natural Eyes palette that I've had since middle school. Ugh. I hope nobody thinks I give clean girl aesthetic because makeup's expensive and I'm gonna use the fuck out of it. I only put it on my skin for a couple hours and I wash it off so I don't give a fuck if it's old and expired. That's just my opinion. I'm not gonna die from it. They put chemicals in our food. You think I give a fuck about putting old makeup on my face? Like, girl. But I use a light brown. I'm gonna start with nudie just because I, I don't remember how dark it is. And I just do circles around my eye. It just brings some color and life back into my eye. I also feel like it shapes up my eye a little bit. I'm gonna actually go in with Cashmere Bunny, which is like a little bit darker. Not a lot. Is Too Faced even a brand anymore? Can someone tell me? Use a fluffy brush like this. That's kind of how you get like a light airy look on your eye. Okay, we are now done with this step. I usually put on my top mascara before I do my makeup. I don't do my bottom because it'll mess with my concealer. But most of the time when it comes to mascara, I literally just grab whatever mascara is closest to me. Um, I'm not usually someone who like has a favorite mascara, but I will say there's this one specific mascara that I always wear because it's like the best waterproof mascara. I've worn it to every funeral that I've gone to within the last five years. Worn it recently. It does not come off. It does not come off. It's the Lash Paradise Waterproof Mascara. Girl, I don't know what brand this is. Oh my God. One of my favorite mascaras. It does not come off. I use an oil cleanser. An oil cleanser does not even cause this mascara to come off. It's great. Every time I have to go to a funeral and I run out, I go and grab it. However, I will say the host of the party did not give me any compliments. So you could take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. Dark humor is how I deal with my trauma. Okay. My eyelashes are like, I would say fairly long. Put castor oil on them, I swear by it. <gasps> Yay! How did I do that? This one's kind of drying out, I'm not gonna lie. <gasps> my eyebrows are getting clumpy right now. Oh, I think my eyes still have castor oil on them. Yeah, if you put castor oils on, castor oils, castor oil on your eyelashes, make sure you take it off before you put mascara on. Cause what is it giving right now? Clumpy. We don't like that. Sorry, it was a mistake that I made. We will be okay. Okay, now it's time to go with the base of the face. The base of the face, base of the face, base of the face. There are many ways that I approach setting up my face for foundation. Regardless, I always start with a primer. The primer that I've been pretty much obsessed with for the past year and a half, I believe, is the e.l.f. Power Grip. I think it's one of the best all around primers. I also am a big fan of the e.l.f. like primer putties. Those are a little bit more specific to what skin issues you may be having, like they have. You have to let this dry. I notice that a lot of people make this mistake. This primer, always bring it down your neck too, girl. It needs to get tacky. While this primer is getting tacky, I'm gonna talk about the next step. When it comes to my base, I use color theory. Color theory is probably one of like the biggest things when it comes to covering up acne scars. It does not have to be complicated. It's really just like the basis of color theory, which is complementary colors. I'm going to show you these two that I use. It's the LA Colors Concealer. I get these from Five Below, super cheap. They're the cheapest at Five Below. So if you have a Five Below near you, I would suggest getting these. I always invest in the orange and the green. My undertone has is a red undertone, so a lot of times my acne and my scars tend to be a little red. If you want to cancel out the redness, you would use green, which is the complementary color of red. When you combine or mix complementary colors, they cancel each other out. So I'm not gonna be using this today because I'm out of it. I didn't buy a new one. We will still cover the acne despite the fact that I'm not using the green concealer. So I also have darkness in my face. I have a five o'clock shadow. As I'm getting, getting older, I swear this hair on my face is like growing at 10 times speed. I grow hair on my chin and I grow hair on my upper lip. It is what it is. I mean, that's just what happens with womanhood and you have hormonal changes. Nothing to throw a fit about. Easily could be covered up. I also have darkness under my eyes a little bit. And with that, I use the orange. Orange is going to cancel out whatever darkness you have. My face is getting starting to get tacky so I'm gonna start adding this in. I'm just gonna use this brush. This is actually an eyeshadow brush and I use this to blend out the orange. I try to get it blended out as much as I can. I use the example of canvas and how you start with drawing. Primer is going to be the drawing process. Color correcting is going to be 
the underpaint. Basically what color correction does is kind of evens out your skin tone and I blend it out as much as I can. You don't want it to be like such a bright obvious orange. There have been plenty of times where I used way too much of it and I put my foundation on and even if your foundation is full coverage, if you have like really bright colors under your skin, it's gonna be hard to miss. Correction is blended in and now my face is tacky. It's time for foundation. Now this is the biggest step. This is the holy grail of these steps. I personally have to mix my foundations a lot because my skin tone is constantly changing with the seasons. Regardless of what my skin tone is, I have two favorite drugstore foundations. One is the newer one because it just came out, which is the e.l.f. Halo Glow. This is definitely a very glowy foundation. So if you don't like your skin looking glowy or you have oily skin, Probably not the best one for you. This foundation, which by the way, I've been using since middle school, I believe. Um, not this specific one. That'd be gross, even though I would do it. Not gonna lie. But it's the Fit Me foundation. The Fit Me foundation is probably the best drugstore foundation on the market. There are so many shade ranges, so many undertones. It's really your best bet when it comes to foundation. But the reason why I really like this foundation is, is, is because it's very buildable and that's really, really important when it comes to coverage of acne and acne scars. I'm gonna use this little plastic thing to do my foundation. I recently went to the beach, so my skin tone's a little bit darker than usual. I think this is good. And here's the thing, you notice how I put all of this foundation on this little tray, which by the way is crusty, what well, shocker, and I'm adding thin layers. That's the most important step. A lot of people think like the thicker, the better, because if you add a thick layer, it will cover everything up and it'll even out the texture, it will not. If anything, it makes your texture way more obvious. Painters don't just throw on a thick, color if they want a darker color on their canvas. If they do that, then all the texture that's on the canvas is going to become obvious. Even their brush strokes will become more obvious. They don't want that. It looks really thick and bulky and it's just not very easy on the eye. What they do is get a light color and stack it. It's the same thing with charcoal. You don't want to start dark because then you could mess up your whole drawing. You start thin and blend it in, okay? There are some days where I'll add three to four thin layers to get the coverage that I want. Now, will I be able to get rid of my texture? Probably not, not fully. If you use thinner layers, your texture will slowly go away, but will it go away completely? No, and that's fine. Foundation to my ears. This is like a little tip from Bretman Raw because my ears are super white. Let's set our face. I tend to lean towards translucent setting powders. The main reason for that has to do with the fact that one, my skin tone changes too much. Two, tinted setting powders look very cakey. And when it starts looking cakey, it has the same effect of just putting one thick layer of foundation on. So I use a translucent powder. I use this e.l.f. powder, one of my favorite powders. As you can tell, I have surpassed pan. But if you could see, there is still some, a little bit of white on the corner. Trust and believe I am very aware of how down bad I am. But that's how I am with makeup. When I find a makeup product that I like, I use the hell out of it. It's definitely giving under consumption core. I'm just gonna press this into my skin. I let the foundation soak into my skin a little bit too and let it dry out a little bit before I do this because I find that if you put your setting powder on right after, it causes your foundation to start splitting. Concealer time. So for concealer, I just use the lighter color of my Fit Me foundation. I have yet to find a concealer that I genuinely really do like. And I think I'm just like so in love with the Fit Me foundation that I I want to use it any chance I get. I'm just going to go on the inner corner and then blend it out, but not blend it out fully, of course. When it comes to concealer, let it dry. Please let it dry. If you do not let your concealer dry, it'll just blend in with your foundation and basically you just wasted not only makeup, but you completely wasted a process of your makeup. While we are waiting for the concealer to dry up a bit, I'm going to bronze my face. Personally, for me, I don't like using powder. I am a cream girl all the way. That has to do with the fact that my skin gets very dry when I do my makeup. To combat that, I use cream products. And also I find that powder products, again, give a very cakey look. So I'm just going to use the e.l.f. putty. And what I really like about this is that, again, it's very buildable. What I'm going to do is, as you can see my concealers right here, I'm going to shape up my face 
and just press it up like this. And I don't add a lot. I just add enough so my face doesn't look washed out. I feel like when your face is one color, it's great for a base. You need to start adding more life back into your face. Also add the bronzer to, ooh. Bro, my voice keeps on going in and out to like the corner of my forehead. Just to make my big old forehead look a little teeny weeny bit smaller. I'm not 100% done with blending in my contour. Since I do use a foundation, it dries a lot quicker than most concealers. So I'm just gonna start blending this in now. Let me just blend this in. Please blend this part in. It's really important. I can't even tell you how many times I don't blend in the concealer on the middle of my forehead and it looks crazy. I feel like my makeup looks worse than what it did five seconds ago. Now I'm going to set my under eye. And what I set my under eye with is completely different from what I set my whole face with. I set my under eye with this banana baking powder. I get a beauty blender and I start shaping my jawline. I go under the contour and start shaping it. And please don't make the mistake that I made when I first got this powder. You may think it looks good and it's not too bright and you set your whole face with it. And you may think, wow, I look amazing right now. And then you take a picture and then you see what the whole world sees. And that looks like a bitch who just went to a bakery. A mess. You don't want the world to see you look a mess. I'm just gonna let this bake for the next couple of minutes. Sit and wait for the bright under eyes, girl. It kind of starts melting into your skin, but you kind of need to help it a little bit. And you may look crazy at first, but honestly, when you spray your setting spray on, it's, it melts way more. Sometimes I feel like I look like the baddest bitch with my just my powder on. Do I look crazy right now? Yes, but it's fine because we're gonna go to the next step and I'm going to add my favorite step, which is my blush. And if you can see, I use the same brand, the Elf Putty Blush. Smile. Now, do I have blush blindness? Blind, blindness? Blindness? Probably. Am I ashamed of it? Not really. I think there's worse things in this world than having a happy looking face, okay? And again, you can build this up. You don't have to put on one thick layer. I just like having an airy face. And I put a little bit on the tip of my nose, just a little bit, not too much. Now that everything is blended in, I'm going to use a setting spray. I, I don't care what setting spray you use. I don't care what setting spray I use. I'm using this LA Girl because it was the only one that I had left out of all the setting sprays. It's not exceptionally good and it's not exceptionally bad, but. It smells good. And add enough to where your face gets wet. Do not add enough to where your makeup's dripping. As I add more. That is not it. Let's add the little bit of spice. And that's highlighter. Personally, I'm a pink girly. I like pink. So, of course, I'm gonna add a pink highlighter. I used to be a gold girly, but then I realized that gold just didn't look as good on my skin as I would have liked it. It looked kind of like too metallic and it didn't blend in with my skin as much. So just setting spray on the brush. I'm gonna add a little to my nose, just the extra that I have on the brush. I'm just a girl. My upper lip too. Is there such thing as too much highlighter? Yes. <laughs> The answer is yes. 16 year old Lexi, yes, there is such thing. And you you hit the mark every time, I'm proud of you. Why do one thing when you could, you know, be the best at it? Why half ass anything? Let's spray her one more time. Ooh. And for lippies, I don't do nothing crazy for my lips. Sometimes I'll use gloss, but for now I'm gonna use the NYX lingerie. What color is this? This is in exotic. I don't know why I added this because my lips are a little dry right now. I'm just gonna use my tray real quick. So that's it for the videos. I hope you guys enjoyed and I just want to let you know that just because you want to cover up your skin, it doesn't mean you have to hate the skin you're in. Just know that you're beautiful and if you don't think that, this crazy bitch on the internet does. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next video. Bye my lovelies. Cash 22, humble dinners, hum, what to do? Cash 22, no chichets, I'm out, it's no use. Cash 22, you got money, so yeah. Cash 22, still I gotta make a move.